Bill Cho's on the road today. We're heading to Marfa, Texas. Actually, not really the road, more like the air. My buddy Branson has shown us a ram to earth house. Come join me in Marfa, I'll see you there. Hey guys, just got off a plane. We are in West Texas outside of Marfa, and I've got a really cool job site to show you today. I'm here with Branson from Pilgrim Building Company, based out of Austin, and Kyle is with Enabler, which is uh, doing a bunch of the work out here. We got a bunch of guys, and check out what we just pulled up to. This is a job site doing a type of construction you've probably never seen before called rammed earth. We're gonna take a full tour, they're actually doing some of it right now, so this is a really cool job site tour. Let's get going. Oh man, look at that building. All right, Branson, what are we looking at here, brother? This is a Lake Plato project that we're building out of rammed earth. The way I like to describe rammed earth is we're making sedimentary rock. Each one of those layers, we place dirt in a form, much like a concrete form, we compact it down. And whenever we're done, it's as hard as rock and we get up to 1800 psi so this building is not going anywhere for a while dang i noticed the bobcats running in the back what's going on kyle uh they're mixing up a uh, fresh batch of rammed earth right now uh bobcats kind of dance together and mix in portland cement we're about nine percent portland content as well okay and then and then is the earth from the site or where did where did all the earth come from uh we're getting it from a local quarry okay so it's so it's actually a quarried like a decomposed granite probably, right? Correct, yeah. And, and what size is that? I mean, it looks like sand from here, but it's, it's not. It's a mixture of 3 8 minus and quarter minus dirt. Got it. Oh man, let's go check out the building, guys. So um, two foot thick, so we were only seeing part of it here. That's right, that's right. And that, that allows for a couple things. Uh, one, it has a thermal mass, so it's not like a regular insulated wall. So the more mass you have in that wall, the more it retains heat and can radiate that heat uh, back out at night. Wow, that's really cool. Let's walk around this way just because of the bobcat noise, but we're seeing the layers of this, right? So this is like, I don't know, maybe six or seven inches thick on each layer, roughly? That's right, and whenever we started, it was much thicker that we compacted down to get to achieve the smaller layer. That's pretty cool. And then you've got a concrete slab, maybe? What's going on down here at that's the right. base? There's, there's perimeter uh, concrete walls that we form off of and then there's an infill slab that we poured after uh, the walls were in place gotcha so it's actually a stem wall that you're seeing here at the base and then they're they're forming on top of that and then not much overhang here just a little short we're we're not in typical austin weather though are we here there branson that's right this house uh in lake flato does has done this house especially well uh it is passive solar orientated and so not only do you have any glazing is recessed back in the wall a bit so you don't have direct sunlight to it but also in this cooling climate the cooler climate we uh want the sun to hit these walls the idea is that the walls uh, maintain a consistent temperature much like a basement would and then northern climate uh, it's not going up or down as the day's temperature goes higher and low it's staying at consistent temperature that's pretty cool and because it's thick it's got that thermal mass so it's it's staying relatively cool inside the building during the daytime and then at night the sky is going to radiate out and take that heat out of the building that's cool so now that we can see it on the inside now you can see how thick these walls are look at that it's two foot thick the windows are set in the center. And then they poured the slab later on this, I guess, right? That's right. And then how does the framing work on this to get the roof framing in? Uh, we did a, there's a step in the wall because we have that two feet thick, it goes, uh, there's a ledge that our framing rests on top. Okay. Um, so basically there's a small parapet of rammed earth, the thickness of those joists that goes around the perimeter. Man, that's really cool. And then what's the detail here? You've got just a black, uh, painted two by it looks like up in here and yeah. then my guess is there's a wood ceiling coming into that probably that's right so there's a reveal that's going to have a shadow line and so we back painted that just so we're not seeing anything light it just makes that shadow that much more uh crisp and then there's obviously a bunch of services in the slab what's underneath those brands yeah so we've got radiant heat here 
Um, this part of Texas uh, primarily is a, it requires heating. Um, with these walls, the energy consultant didn't, didn't think it needed any cooling. Wow. And so we did, made sure to provide heat. This structure does not have any cooling. There's some other structures that we put some auxiliary cooling in for those, uh, that one month a year that it really That's really hot. cool. And then you'll have electrical coming up here. And it looks like maybe some, I saw some blue low volt wires over there. There's probably, was there cabinetry or something over here? That's right, this is gonna be an office and a library. So there's power, data, security. Man, it's neat. And then look how pretty these walls are. Now, I would think that if these were dirt walls, one of the questions people are gonna ask is, won't, it, won't that dirt wash off? And you know, this is the finished wall. So is that gonna be a problem in the future? Well, it's stabilized. So not only is it pneumatically stabilized so that it's compressed, but also with that Portland content, it act, acts as a binder. Um, the other Randworth projects we've done, you could actually put sealers on it as well, kind of that'll help bond it to prevent that dusting. But in many ways, it performs like a, an old brick where it's very solid, but if you sit there and pick at it with something, you can uh, erode into it. Yeah. For the most part, it's extremely durable. And how many PSI is it when it's all, uh, when it's all rammed down like that? We get typically around 1,600, sometimes as high as 1,800 PSI. Okay, so not quite as high as a 3,000 PSI concrete, but that's not right. low. That's pretty, that's pretty amazingly strong, especially when it's two foot thick, right? That's right. All right, so if this has uh, radiant flooring, my guess is there's a mechanical room here somewhere, right? Where's that located? Right here. Oh man, look at this compound. This is really cool. So we've got actually, how many buildings on site, Kurt? There's eight. Eight buildings, and how many total square feet under roof? Uh, about 6,000 square feet under roof. Okay. Oh man, that's cool. So that's form work down there. Well, let's go check that out in a minute. But what are these buildings here? This one's the mechanical room and storage room. Okay, so this has got those mechanicals that we were just talking about. So probably those insulated tubes that I'm seeing in the floor, that's probably your radiant floor tubing, right? That's correct. So you got a boiler or something in here. Oh man, look at all that. Holy cow. Look at all that conduit <laughs> running underground. Ooh, that is a spider web of conduit. Dang. And then this is all exiting. So this is all going to have hot water and at some point that will exit out of the building here. That's pretty cool. So your slabs get poured later. Okay, so that first building was office. This is mechanical. What, what's directly across the uh, hacienda from us here? This is the uh, gym slash banquet area. Okay. Can we check out this building? Yeah. So we've got, we've got your windows and doors set in about halfway. What's, uh, what's holding those windows and doors in place? Uh, we've got some um, wood bucks that are inside the rammed dirt that we've tamped in that we're screwing into uh, the wooden windows and doors into the, the wood. Gotcha. Okay. So there's, so there's a, some kind of a, uh, a lead in there. And what, what are these metal lead ins I'm seeing right here? So this is the lighting. Uh, oh my gosh. So track lighting or it's, um, there'll be tape light in these. That was actually in the formwork. We had to put that in. <laughs> wow. And check this out where he's got a doorway here. He's got a lead in as well right there. What is that we're looking at? That's uh, Western red cedar that we've embedded in the wall. Interesting. So cedar, I would think you might use pressure treated in those walls. Why the choice of cedar? Well, pressure treated, we're always worried about it twisting or bucking in this. And so the Western cedar, we found it's more dimensionally stable and it's so dry here that we're not concerned about moisture rotting anything out. Yeah, that makes sense. So we're in high desert. We're not in a uh, particularly rainy climate. As we were flying out here, Branson was telling me they get about 10 inches of annual rainfall and at least half of that comes in maybe one or two doses. Man, this is going to be a beautiful bathroom. You've got your uh, Gabaret, Gabaret, I think is how they pronounce that, in-wall toilet right there. If you've never seen one of those, that's a carriage recessed into the wall. So then the toilet floats, and then those carriage bolts right there is where the toilet will bolt in. And then this is the tank that gets recessed into the wall. And these carriages right here will actually hold the toilet in place. Cool part about those is you can raise them up and down depending on how high you want to go for your for your tall clients, they can have a taller toilet. And then you've got spray foam in the roof, but other than that, no insulation in the wall. It's just that two foot thick rammed earth, which is gonna help uh, moderate those temperatures when you've got a cold nighttime desert and a hot daytime that's gonna moderate it. Man, these are pretty buildings, guys. Okay, so let's stop here, check this out. Now we can see a sill and a window. Show me what's going on here, Branson. 
So just like a concrete farm, right, we have to kind of build this from a void perspective. And so all of these chamfers that are put in be, have to be made so that once we strip the forms, we can break it down from the inside out. So all these collapse in. What you're seeing up here is the structural steel lintel. Uh, that's a plate. Above that are some angle irons that provide the structure because above this, we've got four feet of earth, which how many tons we think is on top of this? Many, many tons of earth <laughs> are on top of this. So it's, a, it's got a substantial uh, lintel, which is what you see here. Um, you can also bury that, but the uh, architects wanted to express this. Uh, part of the pattern language here is that we've got steel, we've got earth, and we've got a little bit of wood. And this is sloped, it looks like, right, Branson? That's right. So your windows sit in kind of on the flat side, you're sloped out. Yep. And then you can see that western red cedar that you're going to screw into and have some meat to screw into. And then what's inside this building here? That's uh, that radiant tubing, isn't it? That's right. We have yet to pour this floor. This is going to be a concrete floor. And so this has radiant heating. This is cool to see. This looks like a northeast job that I've seen before where he's got the radiant tubing on here. This is gonna have the hot water going through it. He's got a couple layers of, uh, or at least one inch, or pardon me, two inches of EPS foam so that that uh, slab is gonna stay warm and radiate up. And then it looks like maybe a fireplace over here. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, there's gonna be a couple bays. That's gonna be a breakfast nook. So that's gonna be glass with a little bit of um, steel siding. Fireplace over here, that's a low window. And then all glass on this side to kind of capture some of those views. Man, that's cool. Town. These lintels are neat. Look at that big old steel lintel right above us on this doorway here. That's cool. That's get, I bet those lintels have to be pretty strong because this earth, two foot thick, has got to be heavy. Do you guys, have you guys done any math on how much you've used on, uh, on this project in terms of uh, weight of material? We've got about three million three and a half million pounds of dirt brought into the site oh my gosh. three and a half million <laughs> pounds of dirt <laughs> dang all right now this is cool over here if i understand it this is the last building that they have yet to uh to complete on the rammed earth walls what is this formwork holy cow this is beefy walk me through what you got going on here kyle so we've got nine and a nine and a half inch LVL whalers. Okay. We've got LVL uh, strong backs running up the side. Um, it's three quarter inch HDO plywood that we're using. Um, it's all kickered off uh, so that we're holding it up as we want as straight and flat walls as we can possibly get. Oh my God. And the LVLs, the LVLs were really helping us do that. And how tall is this wall going to be when it's all said and done? Uh, this one's 15 feet to the top. Okay. So I'm seeing some back screws over here, Kyle. What's going on with the, uh, how do you screw this in? Are you worried about screws telegraphing to the front of the cake mold? So we are, yeah. So we're using uh, two by two nailers and all of the LVLs are then screwed to the nailer, which is then back screwed to the plywood. So we have no interior, those screws on the inside of it. You're seeing what you're seeing here is a doorway. So there's actually a void box that's inside here for the entrance to this building. And did you tell me earlier that when you're actually uh, screwing those in, you're doing something to mask the screw head from the final uh, product? Is that right? What are you doing? Uh, I mean, we, we're bondoing a lot on the interiors of the forms. <laughs> we want to make sure that we have a, a, a very nice, smooth surface to tamp Oh, my gosh. Did you catch that, y'all? They're bondoing. So if they've got a face screw in here, on the inside of this form, they're going to bondo it to make sure it doesn't show. That's really cool. That is some attention to detail. And it shows. I mean, look at these buildings. They're just absolutely beautiful. You've got chamfered corners. You've got a, uh, am I seeing like a, an expansion joint or something right here? What is that? Control joint, yep. Okay, control joint. But these walls are like perfection. There's no honeycombing. There's no, gosh, I don't know what, I don't know what else yeah, you would we, call it, but there's no damage, I guess. Yeah, we've learned some tricks. One of the things we do is we make sure that whenever we start tamping, that it's consistent all the way across. So you can see these bands. Yeah. Whenever we start laying a lift in, we go all the way around. There are concrete, hidden concrete bond beams on the tops of these walls. 
So we want to pour those whenever the earth is damp as well. Gotcha. And so there's a lot of tricks that we've kind of learned that really ensure this level of product. Man, that's beautiful. Now this is not your first rodeo though, right Branson? How many of these have you done before? This is our third project. This is our first one in West Texas. Um, but yeah, we've got, we've got a great project manager and then our crew enabler uh, really has cut their teeth on it. So we know, uh, we know how to do this now. That's pretty cool. How about we climb the ladder and uh, let's go take a look at the top of the forms. Great. Before it gets loud up here, talk to me about the process. How's the uh, cake get into the forms, boys? We're using a sky track with a one yard bucket on it right now to get it up this high. Uh, and then uh, we found that when you dump the dirt in with a machine, you can get patterning. So uh, we've shoveled all three million pounds oh into the wall. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, so, the, so then you've got a, what, what did we say earlier, a nine inch lift or so. Yep. How are you getting a consistent nine inches knowing that you're going to tamp down to six? We have elevation marks on the inside of our form work, so we're tracking based off of all the pencil. Wow. And then is this the tamper that I'm seeing right here? Yeah, that's Nikki. He's got the tamper in his hands. So how's the tamper work? Walk me through that. Uh, it's pneumatic, so we've got an air compressor down here. Fire up and uh, pull the trigger and it starts bouncing around. Okay. And then do you do you test each layer or do you know if it's gone from nine down to six that you've got the proper compression you're looking for? We know if we put in the right amount of dirt, we can compact it um, to the level that we want. Gotcha, and because you're going two foot thick too, we're not as worried about, you know, maybe it didn't quite get down to six, it's at six and a quarter uh, or six want, and a half. They want variation, that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, you, you want a little bit of, of the, of the variations in the lifts, it kind of gives it the look. Yeah, that makes sense. Now I'm seeing rebar up here. Do most of your jobs have rebar that you're doing, Branson? No, this one, this part of the wall, this is narrower than two feet here because there is a roof structure and this is gonna be a roof deck here. So this is a parapet wall. There's gonna be a, a concrete top cap and there's also a bench that's ledgered in. So the engineer put in some extra vertical support just in this section of the wall. Below this section of the wall, the rebar doesn't go all the way down. Okay, so the shorter buildings in the distance then, no rebar in those buildings, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. just the two foot of, of thick. Yeah, they, but they do have a perimeter bond beam at the top that we encased on the inside of that top, that, the top couple layers of rammed earth. Gotcha. All right, let's watch the guys uh, get the layer going, shall we? Guys, what a beautiful project. Amazing amount of labor that goes into this. I would just, I would say a labor of love almost. Now one question I have though when I finish, as, as, I, as I've seen your site today, is how is this roof, is the roof actually, is the rafters individually bearing on the rammed earth or is there something else there at the top that it's bearing onto? Now there's a uh, concrete bond beam that, was, that runs all along the perimeter of the building. It's eight inches by 12 inches deep. Okay, so we're seeing like a parapet wall or, or almost like a rabbited edge at the top, right? Where your two foot wall stops and then a one foot wall maybe continues up or so. And then there's a, a 12 inch bond beam there, probably with J bolts or something up to, yep. to, to put that roof down from wind load. Yep. Although there's no overhangs, there probably was not a lot of wind load here. No, that's right. That's pretty cool. Guys, any final thoughts as you think about this project? You've been, you've been on site for this project for, uh, for how long, Kyle? Uh, a little over a year now. I've got about a year 
year plus left, so. Is that right? Yeah. It's been going really well. I mean, it's been, a, it's kind of like working on an art piece. Uh, the clients are amazing. Architects are top notch. Um, my crew is absolutely fantastic, every single one of them, so. That's pretty cool. It's been good. And Branson, uh, as the chief of this building company, uh, this is not your first rodeo. You've done no. three of these now, right? That's right. Any thoughts for people who are maybe interested in doing Ram to Earth now that you've done a couple of them? Or, or maybe also tell us how long you expect this building to be around for? Sure. Well, uh, what Kyle said is true. We need, you need the right design team. You need the right clients. Yeah. You really understand what this means. This, this is not inexpensive. Uh, it, takes, it takes time and yeah. it takes a level of craft that is hard to find yep. um, and so if you get if you if everybody signed up for that then it's great because these are 500 year walls you yeah know, these things aren't going anywhere yeah for sure uh, so you have to acknowledge that you can't be plug and play like masonry or cmu or anything like that you've got to really commit to to this process because it is a process it's taken us a better part of a year to get walls in place on this so that doesn't happen you know compared to conventional framing that is a glacial rate <laughs> yeah and and i was really impressed that the guys that are here really did everything i mean you had somebody else pour the stem walls right mm -hmm. but everything else from there on up the form work the lack of a better term pouring of the uh yeah. of the uh earth the ramming the mixing all that stuff's done by your guys that have been here at the site, right, Branson? That's right. Our enabler crew is finished carpenters that can then back off and do rough framing. And so you see that in the form works where there's that scale of rough framing, but the attention to detail is really high craft. And that picks up in the final product of the, uh, the forms. Yeah, and you know, the other thing that I hadn't thought about, you know, when you strip concrete form work, it's usually a pretty rough, dirty job. Yeah. There's a hammer, you're slapping the forms. Right. But if this is 1800 PSI or maybe less, you probably gotta be a little more delicate, don't you? That's right, you've gotta unwrap this just like a present, right? So yeah. you take it off piece by piece, and this is our finished wall. And yeah. you know, with concrete, you can patch it. With stone, you can replace it. <laughs> this is it, this is the finished thing. So you've gotta be very careful. So the level of attention from start to finish has to be high. Yeah, and that's inside now too, right? I mean, we're in the inside of this. What, what is that's this right. building that we're in here? This is the bar library. Okay, so inside the bar library, this is your finished wall that was the form the guys were working on. That's right. And outside of that same thing, the window sills, everything in here is finished with the exception of a ceiling that's gonna get covered. Uh, to cover these eye joists and the insulation will go in. But other than that, everything's finished work. That's, that, that really speaks to your level of attention uh, as the builder and for your career too. And, and if you don't know these guys, you should follow them on Instagram. Very unique company. Uh, they've got 20 some uh, craftsmen that work on all kinds of different phases of the project. Uh, as well as three or four project managers like Kyle that are managing the overall project. So to be able to pull off the level of precision and detail that Lake Flato, the architects did on this project, you need a builder like Branson and his team to do that. Any final uh, thoughts on the project as we wrap up the video, guys? No, we appreciate you taking a look at this. And I think you see what I see. The beauty of Ram Earth is just the same inside and out. Yeah. So. You're not covering anything up on this. Beautiful job, guys. Very impressive. Just from a pure craftsmanship standpoint, super fun project to come visit. But honestly, I'd never seen anything like this before. And to see it in process and see some of the last form work going on in the last building, it was great timing. Thanks to my brother-in-law for uh, flying us out here. We had a safe flight getting out here. Thanks for Kyle and his crew. We're gonna go uh, get some lunch and treat these guys to lunch and then we're hopping on a plane back to uh, Austin. But Kyle is, is stuck here for a while. For a while still. I'll be here a little while longer. <laughs> Guys, follow Branson and his crew on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're interested in a project like this, also contact the architects. Lake Floater does some amazing work. My company actually has a build with them coming up in the fall, so you'll be following the progress of that. But if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Everyone laughs at the end of so that. Normally I do the dorky head knob, and we get it in the comments. But I, could, could you do like a ZZ top?